Hi folks. Uh, now that we've been through chapters one and two and have a good review and foundation of genetics and some of the terminology, we're going to head right into new material and we're going to start with chapter eight, which is all about chromosomal variation. So variations um, are going to exist in, in, in cells and so we're going to see a lot of those variations that have to do with chromosomes and those chromosomes um, are actually going to be in a mutated state if a variation does exist. So um, variations in the number and the structure of chromosomes is most common. So we're going to look at examples of both of those type of variations throughout this chapter. Um, and it's important to realize that these types of variations can exist because they frequently play an important role in evolution. So their mere existence can actually help an organism um, survive through some sort of event um, or make them more productive and then a lot of times we'll capitalize on that um, on that attitude. So um, that's the part of the an, a fundamental part of the evolution process. So just as a review, we covered this in chapter one um, and chapter two. And so now that you guys have a good foundation of meiosis and mitosis and how DNA um, and the overall uh, production of DNA, I want to go back and look more focused at um, the chromosome part. So just a review of morphology of the chromosomes. Uh, chromosomes are going to be in that uh, pretty normal X state and if you have a very even um, X configuration that's going to be medicine, metacentric in nature. Um, if the center of centrosome and the centromere are actually attached more towards either pole or at either end that's going to be submetacentric um, an even more extreme version of that is acrocentric and then of course where the two chromosomes come together and are bound by the centromere at the very end of a set of chromosomes is going to be telocentric so just to review, um, those different configurations can actually play into some of the chromosomal variations that we see exist in organisms. Uh, realize that if you get anything, um, any type of morphology and centrum or chromosomes that is not metacentric, the short arm is going to be referred to as P, whereas the long arm is going to be referred to as Q. So there are very specific designations. And uh, one more reminder, I know we've talked about it um, a little bit, but is this whole technology called karyotyping. And this is where a, a sample of DNA can be uh, taken and those chromosomes can actually be arrested in, um, in uh, mitosis and meiosis and dyed with a certain dye to be visualized. And so the karyotype is going to be uh, in the sort of figure that you see at the bottom of this page. So let's um, drive in, or dive into the three main categories of chromosomal mutations and that's chromosomal rearrangement, aneuploids, and polyploids. Chromosome rearrangement has four main types of mutations. They could be structures that are altered, a duplication of genetic material, specifically gene genes and nucleotides, a deletion of genetic material, or a swapping or an inversion of um, genetic material. And we're going to look more closely at those in just a second. Aneuploids are where um, you're going to see a number of the num actual number of chromosomes contained in the organism has been altered, either increased or added or deleted. And then polyploides are always the addition of complete sets of chromosomes. So let's first look at, look at the first major category, chromosomal rearrangements. There's four main types of rearrangements that can happen. There is duplication, where we see um, genetic material actually just being duplicated during the synthesis process. So um, for example, genes ENF here um, actually occur twice after the synthesis process um, in the rearranged chromosome. There is deletion, where genes are deleted from the, the new chromosome. Inversions are where the genes are actually swapped places in the new chromosome. And finally, translocation is where sections of DNA material is actually moved to a different part of the chromosome in the new arrangement. 
One example um, of a condition that duplication causes is in Drosophila, and this is the, um, the bar region. It occurs on chromosomes um, in Drosophila species and really creates problems for vision. So if you have a mutation um, that is normal, so the bar region, the genetic information contained within that region on that chromosome is normal, then you get um, what we refer to as a wild type or a normal uh, vision pattern. However, if you have um, a deletion of some, or a duplication of some sort, to where you get two bar regions in the next um, uh, chromosome, then that is gonna be a mutant, and we call that a heterozygous bar, and it's gonna result in smaller eyes. Um, a second mutant is homozygous duplication, so you're gonna get duplication on both chromosomes, not just one, like with the heterozygous one. That results in even smaller eye surface area. And then finally, the last one is a heterozygous double bar, where the new one of the new chromosomes is actually going to get three copies of the bar region. And that's going to um, result in very, very small eyes that are really not functional. Those individuals don't tend to last a very long time. Aneuploidy is the second major category of chromosomal variation and refers to a change um, in the number of chromosomes that are actually present. And this happens through the mitotic and the meiotic process. And aneuploidy is very specific to a loss of chromosome, um, a loss of the centromere, so on the chromosome. And there's th four major types of aneuploidy. Nullosomy and monosomy both are... Um, signatory of a loss of chromosomes. Nullosomy is going to be a loss of both pairs of homologs, whereas monosomy is going to be a loss of a single chromosome. Um, and then trisomy and tetrasomy are going to be additions of chromosomal material. So trisomy, um, we actually associate with Down syndrome, also known as trisomy 21. And this is where you get an additional chromosome at position number 21. So you have three chromosomes for position 21 instead of two, which is normal. And then tetrasomy is an addition of two additional chromosomes. Um, so this is going to happen through the process of non-disjunction where cytokinesis really just doesn't take place. So you guys are going to study this um, figure a couple more times, both in lecture and in activity. But this just gives you a good idea of how aneuploidy and non-disjunction take place during the meiotic process and the mitotic process. So here we've got a normal um, whole cell that has two copies of um, as two copies of the chromosomal material. However, they don't split apart normally like they would in anaphase. So both chromosomes are going to end up in one cell and the other cell isn't going to have any genetic material. So that uh, cell ends up most likely um, being disintegrated or going away. And from that point on, as we um, reduce down from originally a diploid at the beginning of meiosis I to a haploid at the end of meiosis I, and then back through meiosis II, we're going to see those chromosome materials uh, or chroma chromatids, sister chromatids, split apart. And then as fertilization takes place, you get uneven distribution, also known as disjunction. Um, during of zygotes and then um, disjunction disjunction in mitosis um, happens in a very similar way as it does in meiosis. So we're going to study this a little more in depthly. However, I want you guys to read through the chapter and spend some time on this concept because it can get pretty confusing, especially as you add more um, chromosomes into the mix. The third major category is going to be polyploidy syndrome, and this is where you have more than uh, the normal genetic sets of chromosomes, so more than two genomic sets of chromosomes. And this can be, um, uh, can, this addition can actually um, come through the loss of genetic material or the gain of genetic material in mitosis and meiosis as well. So um, actually, Make sure to ignore this bullet right here. That's not supposed to be there. That was for the last slide. My apologies. 
Um, so when it comes to polyploidy, there's um, multiple types of polyploidy. The ones that we're going to concentrate mostly on are triploid, tetraploid, hexaploid, and octoploid. And these are because um, this is where a lot of our very popular crops have actually been developed at. So bananas actually have three copies of genetic material. So they're a triploid in nature and not a diploid. Um, and then octoploids, we've selectively bred them into hybrids, so they have eight um, type or eight copies of genetic material. They're an eight N organism. So um, polyploidy can actually occur into two um, subcategories, either autoploidy, which is going to be um, chromosomes that come from the same species, and or a single species and then alloploidy is where you're going to bring in genetic material from a different species so two or more species and we're going to cover this more in depth um, as we get through lecture but realize that alloploidy is really where we're bringing together more than one species is where we get a lot of the hybridization um, theory and stuff from so all right, so here's just a summary of the major arrangements and variations that we really briefly went through. I want you guys to make sure you get a good handle on these. You need to be able to talk about them, know what they are, draw them out, and then apply them in agricultural settings. Um, so thank you very much. Make sure to take your prep um, quiz before Monday at 9 a.m.